IPXs. We're here at California Sensors Converge, right at the center of Silicon Valley. Today, we'll be talking to NGK about their flat battery. It's ultra thin, lightweight, and it's a lot safer than some of the technologies that came before it. Let's go ahead and talk to Steve about the Enesera battery range. Thanks for having me, Steve. Hi, Elliot. <laughs> These are the Enesera batteries. Where does the name Enesera come from? Well, it's a combination of two words, energy and ceramics. Right. So NGK, we're a, a large uh, ceramics technology and manufacturing company, and this is an energy storage device, so it's, that's how we came up with the Enercera word. Right, so it's, it's really in a, in a package that is quite unconventional for a battery, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be obviously super thin. It's 0.45 millimeters uh, thickness. Um, we also have a couple coin sizes, but you know, the, the form factor of this is one of the things that makes it unique. Right, yeah. terrific. So a battery like this, what, what voltage are we looking at inherently? We have a couple different types, uh, basically a 3.8 volt and we have yep. a 2.3 volt, depending on, there's two different, we have a EC series and an ET series. Yeah, yeah. and then in terms of capacity? Up to uh, 27 milliamp hour. Yeah, yeah. so the, these are extremely thin and mm -hmm. the form factor likely allows them to be put into whole new applications that are, that are new to us. What, what are some of the applications that this battery fits very well into? Yeah, obviously something that you want to be very small or thin. Originally, I think the, the target was like a smart card, smart IC card, and those are some of the applications we're in now. Yep, yep, yep. Um, something like this, we have an example of a, a device through a partner company of, our, of ours, EpiShine. That is remarkable. This is a, a position location tracker the thinnest uh, tracker in the world, but is this the same just in the in the classic transparent style? That's right. That's a, just to show you what's inside. That is very cool. So can we can we talk about the, the chemistry of these because they're they're marketed as a safer battery. That's right. Why are they a safer battery? Yeah. So uh, one of the things that makes it unique is it's a semi-solid state. So we some of our ceramics technology we use to design the electrode to have like a crystalline orientation. Okay. And so we could remove a lot of the uh, electrolyte, and then we can also remove organic binder. So, um, and does that equal less flammable? Yeah. So you, we have tests where we puncture through these, yes. and there's no significant heating. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't want to put that back into a device afterwards. But <laughs> no. Yeah. It won't work. But there's no. There's no. There's no risk crazy of failure mode yeah. where it blows up into your hand. Yeah. So something like a wearable device it would be safe. Would be ideal. Um, and also because of the no organic binder, some of these pouch type batteries have an issue with swelling, gas generation. Right, right, right. And uh, that's another feature that we, our batteries won't swell. So that's another important feature. Great, so are these considered a good alternative to a traditional lithium ion cell? Yeah, I think obviously if, you know, if someone needs this form factor, the, the solid state or semi-solid state nature you know, also gives our battery uh, really great reliability. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I mean by reliability, things like um, resistance to over discharge. Okay. Like you can store these for long periods of time at zero state of charge. It doesn't impact the battery. Right. Um, it's got uh, resistance to uh, like float charge degradation. Wide temperature operating range. It's not sensitive. It's very resilient. It's easy to use. Yes. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think that's what, you know, if you have applications where those things are important, this would be a good fit. Okay. Engineers, let's ask some more questions about these technical questions. So, sure. charge and discharge. How does this battery go? Is this one of the ones that can only do 1,000 cycles or is it good for life? Where do we stand? Uh, life cycles? Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the, the test conditions and the environment. One of our, um, one of the, the EC types, it's maybe up to 2,000 cycles, but the ET maybe 10,000 cycles. Yes, okay. Let's talk charging method. <laughs> okay. How do we charge this? So there's two options depending on which of our uh, uh, varieties. Uh, the, one of them requires uh, CCCV, mm -hmm. meaning an IC to charge it. Yep. The other one is uh, just constant voltage. So it, you know, it's simple, no IC needed. Okay, so in, in your hand, right, mm -hmm. they're very flexible. Yes. Does that mean that you can put these into an application where it bends or is that something that will compromise it? We call it bendable. So that's definitely, it's oh, definitely it's, it's bendable. It's totally bendable. It's, um, we have tested it, you know, durability test uh, using a 40 millimeter radius. It's a standard used for like a smart card. Yep. So at least 40 millimeters, and we've done that, you know, a thousand times, and no, no um, negative impact to the battery function. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other one, I see you've got two tabs there. Yep. Are these are these solderable tabs, or are they the type that it's told it just won't stick to and it needs a sort of special clamping mechanism to sit in? Yes, you can. It's a manual soldering. Uh, so. So you can solder that directly to a board? That's right. 
Fantastic. Yeah. So often when I see a smaller battery like this, I, I sort of wonder about its ability to uh, discharge and charge up quickly, but mainly the discharge part, right? Because as yeah. you're saying, this is used for, for smart cards and, and other like IoT sort mm -hmm. applications where oftentimes you'll have transmit and that takes a lot of power. And because of that, you have a battery that has a high internal resistance and it dips the power rail like this, causing shut off. It's havoc. Yeah. How do these go? Yeah, well, th th our different varieties have different characteristics, but yes. um, we have a high power version of this. It has a, a peak discharge discharge current of over 500 milliamps. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so you, you should need a, be fine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then we also have a different one that has a quick charge. So uh, 14 minutes, you can get up to 80%. Is that right? Yeah. So very quick. Right on. Yeah. Okay, what's the smallest size battery that you have in this range? Uh, we have, well, I guess you can, oh one God. of our two coin sizes. So how many, how many volts in that inherently? 2.3. 2.3. And its capacity? Uh, I think it's, uh, this one's obviously a little smaller. It's, <laughs> sure. I think it's a 4 milliamp hour. 4 milliamp yeah. hour. And, and how small is that? It's a 12.5 12 millimeter diameter. 12.5 millimeter. That looks well under a millimeter thick as well. Amazing technology. And what engineer do you feel, loaded question, would be most excited about a product like this? What engineer would be most excited to learn about this range of batteries? Well, it could be a number of people. You know, these batteries have, like I mentioned, a lot of different desirable characteristics. So it might depend on, you know, what's important to that particular person. But sure. obviously someone who needs this form factor, something very small. We, we talked about, you know, this type of device, you know, I think you would have to have this to make this device, right? That is so thin. I, it thin. might not even come out on camera, but that is thin, thin. Right. Something, if it's a wearable, something, if you need that safety, something conforming, potentially mm -hmm. um, comfortable, reliable. Uh, we have this example, uh, another type of... Uh, what is this? This looks like a battery. Uh, yeah, this is a, like not a 2032 really. size. It's called a, a it's like a self-contained power module. Wow. Our smaller coin cell is in this but this has a PV cell, so it's uh, energy harvesting. So anything, if you want to pair it with energy harvesting, that's a great that would be a great application. Um, and in this case, this, this is a, a cool little device that, um, that serves as a power supply, uh, plug and play into a, a existing battery space, but also has some sensing capabilities like accelerometer, temperature, humidity, has Bluetooth. So it's a, um, I have so much potential for something like this. And that is, that is yeah. tiny. It is physically the size of a 2032 battery. Yeah. And this is actually uh, one of our partners, SMK, makes this. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Steve, thank you very much for having me on the NGK booth. Yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs> IPX, this is exactly what we look for. A whole new type of battery technology, smaller, lighter, thinner, and what I can tell, bendable and safer than some of your other options. Awesome technology. Remember, like, subscribe, and stay disruptive.